You have all the power. We give you all the glory. We thank you this morning. We thank you on this beautiful day. You've given us the grace to be your presence. To be in your presence. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You can be seated. The worship team, God bless you. Wara muri anniversary ariko ntibya kubuje kuzinduka gutazira imana naho ejo ejo byari bikomeye Imana ikongera indi myaka myinshi yo gukorera imana Que Dieu te bénisse Hallelujah Hallelujah God is a good God Imana yacu ni nziza Namusa mugenza umugira uti imana yacu ni nziza So say hello to your neighbor and say God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Our God is good. So before we go back to Psalms, so the pastor spoke about giving to God. So the words she shared uh, took me back to Genesis chapter 1. Because I've heard it several times. Where people confuse things. So they just mix a lot of different things. Especially on the fruit uh, that Adam and Eve uh, shared. The reason I would like to discuss or share about this So when when the pastor discussed or shared about giving uh, she discussed about obedience Kubaha obedience Kumviriza uh, listening Bibiria the Bible uh, salvation in one way or another is built on obedience uh, on listening so some people say the fruit that Adam and Eve ate or Adam and Eve Adam and Eve uh, had uh, met. Kenshi, kenshi, wanuwenshi, wanakori, wanakunda kuivuga. So, so many times people say these things. Mugabo, nikibivana ubugambere. 
First of all, uh, this is due to lack of knowledge. Secondly, distraction and the distraction from the devil. So for the devil to destroy people and things, it does not come like an earthquake. He speaks to you softly. And then you start confusing or mixing things. And so you find a lot of Christians in this song. And so they declare these words. And others sing the song in their hearts. Uh, where the, the song I mean is how like Adam and Eve, the, the reason they ate the fruit is because they, they slept together. But this shows the lack of knowledge or the lack of understanding of the word of God. After creating Adam and Eve, the Bible says that it's not enough, it's not good for man to be alone. And then he put the man to bed to sleep. And then from Adam, God created Eve. And once he created a man and woman, he thought that it was beautiful. And the Bible says, and then God blessed them. He said, go. Genda. Go. Muganze muzuris. Go and... Uh go and uh, rule over the nations. So, in other words, that's when God had blessed them as husband and wife. And he had given them the power or the, 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 to be able to multiply and fill the world. Multiply and fill the world. In other words, he had given them the power to live as husband and wife. So if God has blessed them, if God has blessed them to live as husband and wife, so if they live together as husband and wife, if they live together as husband and wife, where is the sin if God had already blessed them? So, so when the Bible says the fruit that they ate don't break your head by looking far from Genesis to Revelation God knew that he had to create or build his, uh, his, his mission. Mission. But because he's God and in his power, he knew surely for it to be possible his people had to Obey. His people had to obey. If people do not, or people disobey, they don't do it. Or if they do it, they do it unwillingly. So God's uh, will was clear from the beginning. Go. Fill the world. Go multiply. Give birth. Give birth. Multiply. Fill this world. But people of Christ. And when you do it. Explain to them where it all came from. Adam tell your children how you got Eve. Eve tell your, your kids how you met with Adam. That's why when people who are married. Where you find kids asking 
asking you, how did you meet with father? Mother, how did you meet with father? If your children haven't asked you that question, they'll soon ask you the question. So it's not to fill the earth. It was to fill the earth with the family that was chosen by God. Knowing how it all started. Knowing the plan of God. The children would ask their father Adam and Eve. Why are we here? Why are we alive? Why are we here? What's our purpose? And then the parents will explain it's to fill the earth. And and then what is next? So what, after filling the earth, what's the next? And the second thing God had told them to, to rule over the world. So from the beginning. So the, so the plan of God was clear from the beginning. So majambo, in other words, so here is a mango tree or a papaya tree. So eat, a, eat the mango and not the papaya. So in our little brains as human beings, we could you know, just try to play our own games. But they forget that behind that fruit, whatever the fruit might be. There was power of teaching people about obedience. As simple as that. Amen. So it's the same thing like a parent bringing a different types of foods and putting it in the fridge and asking the kids not to touch it. And knowing that he bought all this for the children. But what he wants is for the children to obey. For them to eat it in their own time. That often we buy candy. They, we buy candies or they get candies from elsewhere. And their mother knows it's their candy. And then she takes everything else away from them. So they only take so, a few. She knows it's their candy. She knows they'll eat those candies. But in that moment, her wishes is for the children to know that they will not eat all the candies in one day. So even in the Bible, don't look far whether it's an apple, a mango, or any other type of fruit. The Bible says it was a a tree with a fruit tree. That's why I can't just spend time on wondering what type of fruit it was. Because I know whatever type of fruit it was. Biblia what was behind it was that God wanted to teach us about obedience. Teach us about obedience. Where people, people should stop making confusions. The Bible says, go, give birth, multiply. God had already blessed them. So, what, so whatever they could have done as husband and wife was not sinful because they were already blessed by God. And the God did not create Eve. So that Eve 
God did not create Adam and Eve for them to just look at each other and tell Bu each Bibliya other beautiful words. Bibliya the, Bibliya the Bible shows us. Yes, I have Praise the Lord. When Adam hey. saw Eve, he was wowed by her. It was the plan of God. God created Eve for her to live with Adam. So, so the sin that was committed by them has nothing to do with them being husband and wife. It was as a that. sin of disobedience, as simple as that. And so that's where you see the power uh, in the, the words that the pastor shared earlier today. Uh, when uh, God told Abraham, give me your son. God was also teaching us obedience God was not a killer. God, his, his plan is not to just test people. But he was teaching us about the power of obedience. The power of obedience. And in our walk with Christ. And the battle that we, we meet, we're faced with every day. Is uh, obeying the word of God. That's why from Genesis God taught us about the, the power of obedience. Obedience. So you would think how come God put them in a beautiful garden with all sorts of fruits and not allow them to eat on one, on one of them. So that's when we're using our, our human knowledge. Not understanding that God can use anything that it is even though it's small. Just for him to teach us. Something as small as obedience. So that's why when you look at the work of Christ, Abami, uh, all the kings, uh, all the people who Intumna, talk to God, all the, uh, the disciples, all the battles they faced with their walk in Christ, it was obedience. Moses had a problem with obedience. David had a lot of problems with obedience. Listening what God tells you and then obeying. Joshua faced the same battles. The Israelites faced the same battles. The Israelites faced the same battles. So a lot of people say, how come God took Adam and Eve out of Eden because of just an apple? A lot of people say that it was an apple. So I know surely it was a fruit. It was a fruit. God used a fruit to teach them about obedience. Let's go back. Uh, growing up, especially, uh, it's tougher on guys. So men who are here, in the provinces that you grew up, or wherever you... There were different trees, avocado trees, um, mango trees. And there were beans. And there were cassava. 
different types. You would see uh, these fruits. Uh, you would see cassava. Who, who was beaten because they were trying to steal cassava or any other vegetable. But in one way or the other, we were punished because of these other fruits. Am I lying? Am I lying? I, I ran a lot because of mango trees. Uh, where I grew up on the street, there were uh, mango trees. So you would climb up the tree and then fall down and just run. We would just go to places to steal mangoes. We knew how to sing mango songs. We used to sing mango tree and mango songs. People, God knows that it's, thing, it's these things that it's so easy for people to go and just But even So some people would would play with the dog and the others go steal the, the mango. Urumba izo riske zose abantu bafata kubera iki? All these risks just to steal mangoes. But when you would see other uh, vegetables that were planted, such as maize or cassava, no one will go to steal them. Even though some people actually did it. It shows you the power of these fruits. It's easy for people to be tempted to steal. So from the beginning, God knows the past, the present, and the future all in one. So God, there is nothing special. God took all the fruit trees, plant them in, in Eden, and then says, don't touch the mango tree. To, to see whether people are grateful or not. To, for him to teach us obedience. To see how we're obedient. If God created heavens and earth, why why would he just take Adam and Eve out of Eden just because of a mango? That's when we're using our human knowledge. God did not see it that way. He knew the battle that, was a, that had started. The battle of disobedience. That's why from Genesis. When in the Bible, when Cain and Abel had given their offerings and then God thanked what uh, Cain had given, what Cain did was to obey the decision that God had made. God, even though you, you think what Abel gave to you, glory be to you. What, what he should have done, he should have gone and harvested more but because of his dis disobedience of, what, of the decision that God had taken. His first thought was to kill his brother. Noah 
when Noah called on people. Come, let's build the boat. The God creator of heaven and earth, he, st- he told me that great things are about to come. Come, let's build the boat. People at the time knew God and knew how God worked. So And people cuz they knew how uh, Noah walked with God they could have listened to him and helped him build But they told him you have time to waste waste the time just leave us alone And we see the end in the Bible. What happened to the wife of Lot? They told them no one should look behind. You, you, you're moving forward, not looking behind. You're not allowed to look past you behind. But if you, so if you use God's brain or understanding, it's an easy commandment. It takes a few seconds to disobey and just look behind. So they all moved forward except for the wife of Lord who looked back. After the pastor discussed this uh, this morning, I just had to learn something and maybe a future book. And then I'll give this book a title. The Struggle of Obedience. Amen. <laughs> Some people would steal this uh, book title and then But when the pastor was discussing it that's what that was my first thought. Obedience is a great thing. It's a great thing in this world. It's a daily battle that we're faced with. To please God. The reason Abraham was named the father of faith. Some people are jealous of the Israelites. So many people. Why did God just choose the Israelites, the family of the Israelites? God did not love the country Israel. So many people do not read the Bible. God did not choose the country Israel. God loved the man of God. Abraham. He touched the heart of God. He pleased the heart of God. And he gave him a promise. I will bless your generation. They will fill this earth. Whoever will bless you, I'll bless them. Whoever curses you, I'll curse them. It will not stop here. In your family. There will be a, a king will be born who will rule. God chose Abraham. Abraham gave birth Ishmael and Isaac. And then Isaac was born in the plan of God, Ishmael not in the plan. And then God kept on with the promise he gave Abraham. From until then, no one had heard of the country Israel. That country did not exist back then. So after giving the promise to Isaac, Isaac gave birth. Uh, so uh, Jacob stole the, the promise from his brother Esau. That's something. Uh, that's another 
topic we will not discuss today. In all of that, we see the word obedience. We saw how Jacob uh, obeyed his mother. Jacob had understood the power of the promise of God. Uh, the, pro the, the power of legacy. Legacy. Noneho Yakobo ahinduka umwana w'isezerano canke umwana ahawe amavuta yo kubandanya wa mugambi w'Imana. And then Jacob was blessed with anointing to keep on with the plan of God. Ariko Imana ni Imana itarenganya. And God God is is a just he's a God of justice. Imana irazi kubita Yakobo. He uh, he, will, he Jacob was beaten. Ivuru kuguru kwera ko yari yari ivye because he had stolen a promise that was not his. But because of the thirst and hunger he had for Christ, he, 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 he was with the angel of God and said, I will not leave you until you bless me. The problem you have is one. Uh, that's not how the Bible says it, but I'm just trying to imagine or think. You stole the blessing of your brother. You stole it as Jacob. I don't want to keep on with the promise with the, with the thief, Jacob. But because you've touched my heart, because you, you have a thirst and hunger, whoever has the hunger thirst for the kingdom of God shall see God. So because of this thirst and hunger for Christ, I'll keep, on, I'll keep on with the promise I gave your grandfather Abraham. But before that, today your name changes. From today you're not the thief, Jacob. Today your name is Israel. From him, God was about to build a nation, Israel. Starting from the way God, uh, Abraham had touched the heart of God. Obeying God by giving his one and only son. And the way Jacob had a thirst and hunger of serving God. But in his weaknesses, that's where his strength came from. That's where he he saw the, 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 the miracles of God. With his weakness or stealing his brother's blessing in his heart, he was thirsty and hungry for God. He was thirsty and hungry to walk with God. When you see the way God blessed Jacob and the way God blessed David, with the, all their sins and what they did for Christ. We come with the word that says the power of walking with God. The thirst and hunger of serving God. And that day the name Jacob changed from to Israel. And then Israel had 12 families. So from this new name of Jacob, and from the, the, the children of Israel, and that's where the nation Israel was born. God did not just love the country Israel. He loved the man named Abraham. His son Isaac and his grandchild Jacob who was then changed to Israel. So Israel and his children all the 12 families that's where the nation Israel was born. That's why when people say Israel was blessed by God was chosen by God 
it's because of the thirst and hunger that the parents have to walk with God and to serve God. That's why today the Bible says that God chose a new nation. It's not a physical nation like the family of Israel. And we, we were actually chosen to, to be a new nation like Israel. Because we are hungry and thirsty to walk with God. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. So, so obedience is something that is very important. Obedience is very important. And the pastor told us and she was she showed us how important it is to obey God. And it's uh, it's it goes hand in hand with what I was about to share in Psalms chapter 2 verse 2. And chapter, chapter 3 you see how the words of God are all follow each other so I'll read in chapter 2 uh, no chapter 3 I'll read in chapter 3 we'll see the words that uh, David said uh, chapter 4, verse, verse 4. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. Why a holy hill? For those who do not know what a holy hill is, it was the, uh, the, the, the mountain. So this is after so many years. On this mountain. That's where Abraham made with God. On this mountain, that's where Abraham was about to give his son Isaac as a sacrifice. On this mountain, he met God. When he was about to give his son, and God stopped him. On this mountain. He saw God. Uh, he saw the power of Jehovah Jireh. God the power. Uh, God who knows what we need. And when we are, and he gives us what we need. So because of the wonders that God did on this mountain, the Israelites named it the Holy Hill. The Holy Hill, the mountain of God, the hill of God. And David, he had the anointing of prophecy. And he knew that God was everywhere all at once. He knew that God was not only present on this mountain. And in, the, in, his, pro, in his prophetic anointing, he knew that and he said that I pray out loud and God hears me out of his holy hill. It's like him saying I pray and God hears me from his holy hill. For him to remind his family and the other people what God did on this mountain. There is power of remembering Remembering where we came from. There is power of remembering how you met with God. There is power in remembering how when God changed our lives. 
Paulo abwira Timoteo ngo mu bintu byose wame wibuka Yesu. That's why God says in everything always remember Christ. Kuko Yesu yahinduye ubuzima bwa nyogo kuri wawe. God changed the life of your grandmother. Ubuzima bwa mama wawe. The life of your mother. Bituma nyogo kuri wawe na mama wawe bakubwira ibijanye nagakiza. It made your parents speak about speak Na we, about Christ to you. Nawe Timoteo bekuviramo agakiza. And now you have salvation. So because of this, Timothy, always remember Christ. There is power when you remember your, where you're from. Always look at when the Prime Minister of Israel, whenever he's speaking at the United Nations. It's rare that he will speak and not say about the history. It's rare that he speaks and not discuss about where he's from. All the battles they faced. When you read about the history of Israel, all the battles that they had to face, the prime ministers always reminded Israel where they from. So what will amaze you is that in this Psalms it was the time when David was going through hardships. It was when David had re- had flown away in refuge. He had lost his son Absalom. He said when I pray it was in the all I know is what God in his holy healing he listens to my prayers and he rescues me praise the Lord so God has given us an introduction the God that pastor had shared about obedience and God wanted to strengthen this word in our lives. There is a power in obedience. There is power in obedience. There is power in obedience. I've seen so many people in my life that were blessed because of obedience. So if we we were disobedient in different times of our lives, we wouldn't be where we are today. What we are, what we have, there is a day in our lives we should never forget where we all got it from. It's because in different times of our lives, we, we decided to obey what God said. So, Psalms chapter 2. So, I will go through, through it fast. So, this is uh, called a messianic... Uh, Psalms. So these type of chapters. So these chapters d- discuss about the Messiah. So these chapters in the Old Testament discuss about Christ, his life, the life of Christ, his death, his resurrection, and the coming back of the Messiah. So this, this second chapter of Psalms, so it discusses about the death and the resurrection of Christ. So that's a brief summary of this chapter. And this psalm was written by David. And he, he wrote it in a prophetic way. 
David was a king. He had an anointing to prophesy in his own life. Acts chapter 9 verse 29. It shows that David had power and anointing of prophecy. And you will see that in most of the chapters that he wrote, he discussed about the, the, the coming back of Christ. So, so we see in this chapter, we see how nations we see how God will come back to, to rule over. So, and this second chapter of Psalms, we discussed it in the New Testament. Uh, in Acts chapter 4, 20, uh, verse 25, 26. Uh, ch uh, chapter 13, verse 33. Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verse 5 and 6. Uh, verse five, uh, chapter 5 and verse 5. Re Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 26. And 27. Uh, uh, Revelation 12, 15. Revelation 19, 15. I am a very second. I am a very second. I I give you these verses for you to then listen back to the live and then. Read so, verse. So we see that chapter two uh, discusses about the Messiah. He wasn't even born. He, he wasn't born yet. But King David had the, prof the anointing of prophecy. In his uh, praise, he could praise about what is about to come. And he would reveal the plan of God. So let's read the second chapter of Psalm. Why, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Saying, let us, let us break bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that's seated in the heaven shall love. He that sitteth in the heavens shall love. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then he shall speak unto them in his wrath. And vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me. Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heaven. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a porous vessel. No, Take 
Be wise now therefore. Musabe uhoraho mubashe munezeranwe guhinda agashitsi. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Mugumbi rujya mwana kugira ngo ntarake. Kiss the son lest he be angry. Namwe mugahonera mu nzira. And you perish from the way. Kukuburake bwiwe bwoca buziriringa. When his wrath is kindled with but a little. Hahigwa bamuhungira ko bose. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Muri kigice cy'akabiri muze mutanije mutani jambo rivuga ngo hahiriwe abamuhungira ko bose. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. So imagine this. David was a great king. And one day in his, while praising. One day while praising. He starts saying about the power of Christ. Start discussing about the coming of Christ. He starts speaking about the rage that will come. And you see that uh, David uh, speaks about the promises of God. The same promises that God gave Abraham, Jacob, uh, Isaac, and then Jacob. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16. Uh, 1 Kings 17, verse 1 and 2. With their promises of God. And when we look at uh, this chapter of Psalms, we see that David knew all these promises. So, this is why this chapter David says that nations will have rage. The, the rulers of this earth will be at a place where they, they don't care about Christ. God is incapable of anything. They have power over everything. The same way rulers of this earth think that they have the last word on our lives. The same way rulers put the rules that they desire regarding the church. Nothing is new about all this because David had said it. But in Psalms chapter 2, what David reveals one more time is in verse 4, he says these, these rulers will be in fault. Because the power of God is above all other powers. He that seated in the heavens, he will love, he shall love. Today there are so many people that God looks at who rule over people who rule the church the way they want to. When I look at the word of God, where God is seated in heaven, he looks at them and laughs at them in he from heaven. The, the hearts of the rulers are at the hand of God. And he can change them the way he likes it. So in other words, if in this earth, if God has given us the power, if we use this power incorrectly, uh, when we forget where this power comes from. We have to remember that wherever God is seated in heaven, he is laughing at us. Amen. 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 We are like ashes. Whatever you are, 
the Bible says all these great rulers are like ashes. The reason the Bible says this when you remove your, his spirit from your life that same day there is a certificate that says you're dead. After that certificate after these few days you start to smell. So this body Amen. After all this ends it all becomes ashes. So that's why when God when sitting in heaven how we shake others we take decisions to attack other nations in the earth there is so many things thoughts, so many plans so many plans that they have and when people are making these plans because they believe they have power to rule over and destroy. But what we forget is one thing. God, when he's, whenever he, when he's sitting in heaven, he's just laughing at us. Because he knows our power is limited. He knows in one way or another. He doesn't, he just takes a few seconds. He takes a few seconds. If he leaves us, he can shake us. Meaning that how many have seen presidents who ruled over this Earth. And then after his uh, president is over, uh, he his term he's uh, 80 years old. So the person who had power to rule over, uh, you know, he's walking slowly. There is no lesson that you learn from this. We don't learn. So think about it. Every powerful person that you know of right now. Think, think about it. Our days are numbered. So if God doesn't take his spirit from us now, he'll take us slowly till we're 80, 90 years old. And hey. we'll start. Hey. Remember, uh, he was str strong. His Excellency, His Highness, my, my Lord. All these great titles. Uh, everyone shakes because of this per one person. And there's a time where you, they need help to walk. You know what God reminds us? We are people. That when we're strong, that's the time to respect or to obey. It's the time to love. It's the time to do good to people. Because you reach at this age uh, where people say this was a man. This woman Yaru was a woman. Mnieza. She was a great woman. She did good. She did great things to people. 
God will laugh at us in, his he in heaven. So many people that God laughs at because they forget where the power comes from. May the Lord help us. What you forget is they forget verse 4. Uh, the Lord, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Uh, a person can be uh, of great power in this earth. Amen. Not uh, respected by God. And there are people who have nothing, but they're respected in the eyes of God. There is a story that people like to share in the church. I've never seen this in the Bible. Uh, some people in the church will say God revealed this to so and so. I can take it as a story that could help us learn. The same way God can reveal, it, can reveal this to us. And now it's, uh, it's confusing to know what God has revealed or not. Uh, people will say uh, God revealed himself showing that he visited the church. And God had a list of those who served him. And God said that he would give uh, to a servant of God who who served in Transformation Church. So in that church, the pastor stood and he was ready. You know, 10, 20 years uh, serving God in winter. The pastor uh, was getting ready thinking that he would be called. And then God called her an old lady that was seated at the back of the church. And that's the person that God gave the blessing or gift. I can take it as fiction. Same way it could be a, a true prophecy. Uh, but we can learn from this. Uh, today we forget about where we got the power from. God loves us. And this, he has no respect for us. So for him not to laugh at us, for him not to lose his respect for us, never forget where we come from, where we are, uh, the, the power we have and where we got it from, what we have and where we got it from, whatever we are in this life, and it gives us, uh, it allows us to love and obey God. To, uh, to obey people without looking at where they're from or what they have for us to touch the heart of God. That's why God loved David. I learned so much from David day in, day out. I learned so much from Joshua every single day. That's how Paul walked with God. 
These are people who did great things in so many different ways. That's how Caleb teaches you. These are people who walked with God. When you looked at their heart, the same way Gaius teaches me, the heart for Christ. The power they had. They had understood and knew, known that the power they had was from Christ. They had a thirst and hunger to serve God. To give God glory in every circumstance. And to humble themselves for God to get all the glory. So, so cursed is the person who forgets where they're from. So in the book of Daniel chapter 5 verse 20 to 25. Chapter 2. Chapter two. God created heavens and earth. So at the time it was empires that we had. They were all created by God. No one is above the power of God. However you might be. However you might be. You have to understand that we're created by the power of God. We were created by the hand of God. By the power of God. Whatever we have and all that we have in this earth. And what we'll have. We were given by Christ. So what we do is one thing. Uh, is uh, what they tell us on a verse uh, 11 and 12. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled, when his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are they that put their trust in him. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Uh, we have to realize that we're nothing in this world. Our 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 God created our God. Amen. He came clothed in flesh. He humbled himself. He lived with men. He had hunger. He mourned with them. He cried with them. And he taught us how to humble ourselves. He taught us how to, to, to obey God, to, to listen to God. He died for us. He resurrected. We, we got life. And for us to receive the blessings of Abraham. So David is telling us one thing. We have to give him everything. We have to surrender. Amen. Surrender everything. Pastors, young people, older people, wealthy people, everyone. Uh, based on the word of God. Saying that he's the one crea crea who created heavens and earth. He's the one with all the power. We should do one thing. God, I surrender everything. I surrender everything. I choose to always stay in salvation. 
for when you come you will I'll be ready for you in this world it's it's hard but one day we shall go home one day we will go home one day we'll go home where we'll live with God all the days of our lives where we'll live with God eternally so we're called to do one thing in this life to be with Christ to run to Christ to humble and obey for one day to live with Christ let's stand thank you Jesus thank you Jesus let everyone repeat and say God I thank you for your word 